On the day's video, I'm going to be catching you up with what I've what progress I've made or little progress I've made. Um, basically, so far I've taken the sandblasted cab off of this 55 frame, uh, took the 56 cab off the 79 frame, and set it on here. The fender just mocked up for, so I couldn't uh, help myself. I wanted to see what it was going to look like. It's just barely sitting on there. Um, the 55 had brand new cab mounts, bushings, and arms, so. Uh, these cabs just mount in four spots. You got two in the front, out here on these, I guess you could call them outriggers, but um, there and the other side. Now on the back, there's little arms that connect from the frame mount to the cab. So these little arms here, it's kind of a little boomerang shape. So it bolts there and bolts in here through the cab. Um, you got a bushing there, and then there's bushings inside this arm. Um, those are brand new on the other one, so I went ahead and stuck them on here. Um, nothing too exciting there. I got a bench seat stuck in there. This is out of a... Oops, sorry about my finger there. Uh, late 80s, early 90s Chevy, I think. Real common for these pickups. They got a slim back. So you gain a little bit of room, I think, these seats. And the other advantage is they have a flat mounting bracket, which is easy to adapt. I just got it setting up on some two by fours right now, trying to figure out where I want to put it. I need to, you know, I want to probably reuse the factory battery location, either for the battery or a fuse panel, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna have to, that's not where I'm gonna put it. I just got it sitting in there for now, but. Uh, I had two styles of bench seats that I picked up off Craigslist, one without the headrest, one with the headrest. I'm going to go with the one with the headrest. A little safer if, ever got, if a person ever got rear-ended. It uh, helps keep your head from going through the back window and possibly taking your head off, which uh, probably has happened on a rare occasion. So we'll go with the headrest. They look okay. It's good. It doesn't look original, but um, it's a compromise for safety in my eyes. So I stripped all the cab out as well, took all the wiring out, um, had the dash out, pulled the glove box out, which is pretty much was nothing left of it. Um, just cleaned all that. All that wiring is going to get replaced. Somebody in the past, not me, got pretty overzealous with drilling holes. There's holes all across the front. That had, I mean, some of them are factory. There's, you know, your windshield wiper and whatever, but um, heater, ignition choke um i don't know what that one was for i maybe a spotlight i don't know it's a pretty good size hole but uh it is what it is i i'm not this is like i said it's going to be a driver kind of i'm kind of thinking american graffiti style kind of uh you know bob falfa uh, milner kind of influenced build um try to keep it sort of nostalgic looking um, at least with the uh, interior and exterior wheels and so what I'm working on now is the steering column um, I want to get that in because so much stuff kind of revolves around its location I want to do that before I put the worry about the hanging the brake pedal and the clutch pedal and setting the engine in there so everything clears the best I can uh, so what I'm going to be working on today, I started it yesterday and uh, didn't get it done, but I need to remove this piece off of the steering box, this Valera steer, Mopar Valera steering box. Uh, there's a roll pin that goes through here. I read some people that it was a tapered pin. Um, it looked like just a regular roll pin to me, so that might be a difference of years or something. Um, but if it is tapered, make sure you're driving it out the right direction, otherwise... Uh, uh, you're gonna have a heck of a time. So anyway, I got the roll pin out and then it had a The rag joint or whatever you call it piece still in there and I tried to use that I went up through the cab hole with my uh, with a slide hammer um, Tried to pull it out through that and I ended up just pulling this piece out whatever it, it wasn't a gold but um, So I pried on it, but I started kind of chipping or galling this piece here. This is must be aluminum so not a great spot to run a chisel or anything in. Uh, pried up against these little pieces, which are steel, but again, it's starting to mushroom those over. So uh, I tried some heat. I heated this whole thing. Well, 
as best I could. I didn't want to start a fire. There's grease in here. There's, you know, I didn't want to heat the steering box and burn the seals up. So, but I heated that up pretty good and that didn't help. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to take a, uh, my little die grinder or grinder, whatever, with a cutoff wheel. And I'm just going to split this probably on both sides and I'll just remove it that way. A um, little more work, but I'm afraid to keep prying on I'm going to damage something, either the bearings in the box or something. I thought about drilling a hole here to put a bolt through and a chain or whatever to use that slide hammer some more, but I'd hate to just keep beating on that, the steering box bearings and stuff. I don't, I don't know how durable those are, but cutting it off ought to be pretty safe in that regard, as, I can, as long as I can keep from cutting in the steering box on accident, so... That's what I'm going to do next. Um, I've ordered the steering column. I ordered a 30 inch. Um, it wasn't the fancy Flaming River or um, oh, whatever. I did it. Those are like $800 columns. I found one on Amazon. I think it's the same one the mid 50 sells, but it was like $180 bucks, um, tilt. I went with Chrome because it's the same price as uh, the, the unpainted. I don't, I don't mind Chrome. I mean, they used to chrome everything in these years of vehicles so it's not out of place to have a chrome steering column I don't think and I could always paint it if I don't like it paint don't stick real good to chrome but um, good enough I've painted wheels and stuff and they last a long time as long as you don't hit them with a pressure washer get carried away um, so I ordered a steering column ordered a two and a half inch drop again Amazon had them for like 35 40 bucks which is you know she's less than half from other places I, I might be compromised on quality. I don't know. When I get if I don't like it, I'll send it back. But um, I'm doing a budget build here. So anywhere I can save money will help. Um, I had to order a Borgensen. I think that's right. A joint for the steering box. Because that that's a... I believe it's a 5.8 36 count spline. But it's a Chrysler specific spline. Um, I did research a bunch yesterday. And you cannot put uh, like, uh, oh, I'm blanking on what the GM was, but GM has the same spline count in some of the cars. And that spline count supposedly will not fit on the Chrysler steering box. So make sure, you, and that's like a $75 joint. I'll, uh, uh, I'll try to get the part numbers and put them in the description or maybe I can get fancy with my editing. I'll throw them up on the screen here. Um, so the Borg, I used a Borgensen joint down there for 75 bucks. Uh, and that goes to Chrysler 36, uh, 5H2, I went three quarter DD shaft. So the, the steering sh column has a one inch DD shaft. So I just got a joint for it that goes from one inch to three quarter. Three quarter shafts are a lot cheaper and easier to find for whatever reason. So I'm ordering that stuff all from Summit. Um, and I'll add those part numbers and um, probably should put them in the description in case they don't work. I can update that with what does work. I'd hate to put information on here that I can't remove later. So look in the description um, for what I used. I'll, I'll put the part numbers down in there. Um, but the whole thing, I, well, I ordered a steering wheel and stuff. So I think I have 400 bucks or something just, which was more than I thought. But when I start piecing things together and, you know, if I don't like the looks of that other joint that I bought that's not Borgensen, I might replace that. It's made out of stainless, so, or, uh, yeah, I think it was stainless steel. Um, so that ought to be decent quality for what I'm doing. Um, but again, if I don't like it, I don't really want to make big compromises on my steering. Um, if uh, the safety is number one here, so, um, so that's that. So I'm going to work on getting this cut off. So I've used the roll pin slot is kind of a guide of depth that way because you can just barely see where the teeth engage that coupler so i'm staying just outside of that as i kind of cut slit across there so now i can watch real carefully and kind of easily split that and then when i get close to getting into that area i'll probably try to uh, gap that with a chisel um, there's probably better ways of doing that but that's trying to be safe I don't want to get gall those uh, gall the uh, splines at all so that's that's my method so far well it wasn't pretty but I finally got it removed I just kept kind of whittling it down until it was just outside of the threads 
the splines rather and then uh, was able to kind of I, I poured some 50 50 ATF acetone I like that for penetrating fluid it's hard to beat that because um, it was nice and warmed up by grinding on it so I was able to pour some of that in there to kind of soak into the splines and then I just kind of was prying and tapping on it with a hammer and finally got it to pop off but that's what I ended up whittling it down to to get it off of there but um, I could have split the whole thing but I was just too nervous about biting into the splines so if I was in a hurry I could have just split this whole thing in half and got it off that way but I was taking the slow and cautious path so I'm sure there's a better way to do this but I kept trying with the slide hammer too and I wasn't having much luck with that um, I was afraid to get real carried away because it's pulling on that shaft which isn't really designed to be probably impacted that way so I didn't want to get too carried away but uh, anyway it's it's off